Listen up my liberty loving losers, it's that time of year again. It's time for another yearly video where a British guy gets irrationally angry at an American who's been dead for 96 years. That's right, it's Woodrow Wilson Hate Day 2020. <laughs> I've now spoken for two years in a row about how Woodrow Wilson is responsible for the second KKK, Hitler, income tax, Jim Crow laws, instability in the Middle East, American worldwide interventionism, and the Pacific War, but I'd like to demonstrate just how much more suffering and injustice this single man is responsible for. We're gonna get a little counterfactual on this month's episode. Let's say that, for example, Woodrow Wilson doesn't become president. Sound unlikely? Think again. Second place candidate, Theodore Roosevelt, originally sought the Republican nomination, but narrowly lost out. He then founded his own political party called the Progressive Party, which then split the Republican vote and allowed Wilson to sail to victory with 42% of the vote. So let's say Roosevelt doesn't narrowly miss out and actually wins the Republican nomination. With a unified vote, he wins the election in an electoral map that looks something like this. What does Roosevelt do as president in his now unprecedented third term? Well, the Roosevelt Manifesto was quite radical for its time, including things like an eight-hour workday, social security, and a national health service. Also limits on campaign contributions, recall petitions, referendums, compensation for work injury, and a greater government transparency. Remember, this is the 1910s when not even most of Europe had these things. Wilson thought the US was naturally superior to all other countries, but what Roosevelt might have done is actually make this true. Roosevelt would have also not segregated the federal government, so perhaps the civil rights area would have come a bit quicker, who knows? But the biggest difference in a Theodore Roosevelt presidency is his attitude to the Great War. Roosevelt was a great supporter of joining the war, and probably would have found any excuse to get Congress to declare war. And that excuse would most likely be the sinking of the Lusitania in 1915. So the US joins the war in 1915, and with Russia still in the war at this point, Germany's gonna be a bit overpowered. The end of the war is hastened to early to mid-1917. Nice. An early finish to the war means the rise of communism in Russia is quelled by the Russian Republic government, so no civil war or forced collectivization killing hundreds of thousands of people, no famines in Ukraine killing millions, and no mass purges by a psychopathic paranoid bank robber. With no Soviet Union, there's no great enemy for a certain German painter to rally against, which might mean no Nazism, no invasion of Poland, no Second European War, and no Holocaust. Plus, without Wilson's souring relations with the East, Japan wouldn't have been as antagonistic to the USA like we discussed in last year's video. So no Pearl Harbor, no Pacific War, and no Japanese war crimes, kamikaze missions, Unit 731, or Bengal famine. This war that didn't happen wouldn't end in the creation of nuclear weapons, followed by a massive arms race and stockpile of warheads that still exist and could go off at any time of any day, killing literally billions of people. With no World War II or Soviet Union, there couldn't be a Cold War, and with no Cold War means no Berlin Wall, no Iron Curtain, no need for every free country in the world to put up with US military bases, there would be no Korean War, meaning no North Korean concentration camps and nuclear threats, no Vietnam War causing inhumane death and destruction, no pointless interventionism and overthrowing dictators in South America, no selling missiles to Iran for cocaine money, no Afghanistan War, meaning no brave Mahajideen fighters can organise two hijacked planes to kill 3,000 people, meaning no Iraq War, not having to take off your shoes when boarding a plane, no Patriot Act or government spying, no Muslim scapegoat for right-wing morons to use to push racism and xenophobia, no Cold War means no Chinese Communist Revolution, which has led the ultra-authoritarian PRC to become the global manufacturer of everything right under our noses, and forecast on becoming the most powerful country on earth in the next half century. So in 2059, when you're cleaning the boots of the Chinese troops occupying your city, you can thank Thomas Woodrow f***ing Wilson for being such a deluded egomaniac that he sold you and billions of other people down the river so he could spend eight years in the White House screening racist films and fantasizing about being the head of an American global empire. Thank you, see you next year.